Hi guys, welcome to my channel and welcome to another series called Complex Numbers the Easy Way. Here I will be taking through from scratch different topics on complex number. I hope you are going to enjoy it. Thank you. Please, if you've not subscribed to my channel yet, don't forget to do so. Yeah, complex numbers. You will have come across different types of numbers in mathematics. In fact, you are all aware that we have different systems of number. For example, when I have something of this nature, so we call it natural number. What do we call natural number? Natural numbers are the set of counting numbers. So there are those numbers that we were introduced to when we were in primary school. So number like one, two, three, four, five. You understand now? And so on. So they are called natural numbers. You understand? So that is the set of counting numbers. So likewise, we have integers. So integers, which is denoted by this, so they are the set of what? Positive numbers. The set of positive numbers. Negative numbers. And what? And zero. So when you have a set of number that comprises of all the positive numbers, negative and zero, so we say such number is an integer. E.g., when I have something of this nature, Minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. You understand? So that's uh, integers. Likewise, we have rational number. So any number that can be expressed as fraction of two numbers, that can be expressed as P divided by Q. So we have Q is a number not equal 0. So is an example of rational number. So, for example, when I have 3 divided by 5, so 1 divided by 2, etc. So, all these numbers are what? Are the set of rational number and they are denoted by Q. So, likewise, we have irrational numbers. All those numbers that could not, could not be written in form of what? P divided by Q are said to be a rational number. You understand now? So there are those numbers that could not be written in this form. So, for example, when you have pi, you know your pi is equal to 3.14, so you understand now? So you can see that you cannot express this in terms of a fraction. You will ask me, okay, now, but I used to see that pi is equal to 22 divided by 7. Yeah, this is an approximate value. Even if it is 22 divided by 7, so you will agree with me that if you are, I mean, a finding, if you find the quotient, you observe that we are going to have something, that a number that doesn't end. You understand that? So that's an example of a rational number. We know... Another set of number we've come across before is known as uh, real numbers. And real numbers are a set of numbers that comprises of your natural number, your integer, your rational number, and what? And irrational numbers. And irrational numbers. So if I ask you what... I mean, uh, is the largest number you've, largest system of number you've seen of, you've observed, then majority of people will say it is real number. But no, it is not real number. We still have another system of number in mathematics that's far larger or greater than what? Eh, than the uh, real number, so which is complex number. That's what we are going to do today. So when we say complex number, what do we mean by complex number? For example, let's say I have this kind of equation. S squared is equal to 4. You know this is a quadratic equation. 
And don't forget from the rule of quadratic equation, or let me say polynomial generally, when you have equation of degree two, then you are going to have how many roots? You are going to have two roots. You understand now? That's why if you recall, you will observe that if you want to write this, you are going to say our x squared plus or minus 4, which is equal to plus or minus 2. Because when they say square root of 4, so a square root of number means what is such a number you are going to multiply by itself two times to give you the number inside the radical. Square root of 4 is what? Is plus or minus 2. Because when you say 2 times 2, you are going to have 4. Likewise, when you say minus 2 times minus 2, you are going to have what? 4 as well. You understand now? So square root of 16 is equal to plus or minus 4. Because when you say 4 times 4, you are going to have 16. Likewise, when you say minus 4 times minus 4, you are going to have what? 16 as well. Okay, now, let me give you this kind. What if I have something of this nature? For example, if I have square root of minus 1. Don't forget, according to the rule. So the rule is when you say something, when you have something inside the radical, you understand now that is when you have square root of a number, it means what is such a number such that when you multiply that number with it uh, by itself, you are going to have the number inside the radical. That's why I said square root of 4 is plus or minus 2 because 2 times 2 is equal to 4. Minus 2 times minus 2 is equal to 4. So what is square root of minus 1? 1? No, because 1 times 1 cannot give me minus 1. Okay, you are thinking of minus 1. That is not true as well because minus 1 times minus 1 will give you 1 and not minus 1. You understand now? So then such number is what? Eh? We say such number is something we don't know. Don't say such number does not exist. In fact, when you press your calculator, if you don't know before, when you press your calculator, square root of negative number, any square root of negative number is going to give you mathematical error. You understand now? So that square root of minus one, don't say, I mean, uh, the number does not exist. Don't say that. Uh, you say, I don't know it. You understand now? That's uh, in mathematics, or let me say, for example, for every... When you have some, let me give you an example. Let's say, assuming somebody asks you, the sky has a limit. You understand now? You know, the simple response you can give to that question is that, I don't know. You understand now? So, but don't say sky does not have a limit. Because the almighty God who created the sky know, I mean, where it ends. You understand? And that's why we say square root of minus y is what is I. That is something we imagine. We don't know it, but we imagine it. You understand now? So when I have square root of minus one is equal to I, then when you square the both sides, square the both sides, then I'm going to have square root of minus one squared is equal to I squared. So you see that this guy will cancel this guy, then I'm going to have minus one is equal to I squared which is emptiness, as i square is equal to minus 1. So don't forget, we have that i square is equal to minus 1 or square root of minus 1 is equal to i. So this is what you have to put at the back of your mind because we'll be using it in the subsequent video. So this is what we know as what? I mean, a complex number. In essence, when I say complex number, complex number, which is denoted by what? By z is the combination of real number and imaginary number. This an imaginary number. You know, when you say square root of minus 1, yeah, you can say the same thing as 0 plus i. This 0 is a real number because it is, it is part of real number. But this i is an imaginary number. So in general, when you now have number of this form, z is equal to s plus i, y. So we are your s is real number. And your y is what? Imaginary so then we say that number is what? Is a complex number. We call it a complex number because it is complicated. Because we cannot solve it beyond this area. Remember when you have something of this nature, you can see that 2 and 7 here are real number. When I say 2 plus 7, I'm going to get 9. 
So, but when you have something of this nature, two plus two high, you cannot proceed because they do not belong to the same system of number. This is their number and this is imaginary number. So complex number. So you understand now. So it is called complex because it is complicated. We cannot continue from that. So therefore, when you now have Z is equal to X plus I, Y, like I've said, your X here is the real part and Y is the imaginary part. So X is the real part. You can write it as re of Z, which is something as the real part of X. Z is equal to X. You understand now? So why the imaginary part of Z is equal to what? Is equal to Y. Don't say I, Y. You understand now? Because the imaginary part there is what? It's just Y. You understand now? So when I have, for example, Z is equal to 3 plus 5I, then my real number here is what? The real part is 3. Then the imaginary part is equal to 5. So if you understand this, I'm going to stop here and continue in the next video. But if you understand it and enjoy this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.